Speeches must be confined to the merits of the question. You will not be permitted to engage in, in personal attacks. Um, only board articles uh, may be considered. Binding action cannot be taken under that final, final article that we only do under, under other business. <clears throat> Um, the moderator's ruling can be appealed, and I encourage you to do so. My goal is to follow and do the will of the assembly here. You need not be recognized if you want to appeal a decision that I've made. Just call her out. I would like to appeal. If there's a second on, on your appeal, I'll explain my ruling. Um, everyone gets to speak once to it if you, if you like, and then we will vote, and an affirmative vote uh, sustains the ruling. If you think I'm messing up Robert's rules of order, please... <laughs> Call out point of order. Um, it will happen likely. Uh, you know, I do this once a year, and I hardly become an expert at it, so I'm uh, uh, very willing to, to hear folks' uh, uh, suggestions. <clears throat> also, I'll use unanimous consent to allow us to move things along. Uh, an example of that will be if a member wanted to speak for a third time, uh, they're only left twice, but if they want to speak a third time, um, I would say, if there are no objections from the assembly, we'll let John speak for a third time. But if someone objects, then uh, we can go through the process of trying to get a two-thirds vote to suspend the rules and allow them to talk. So uh, unanimous, unanimous consent is our friend in moving things along. Um, if there's only one candidate for an office, um, we can just say, ask the clerk to cast one ballot so that we don't have to do any kind of a, uh, a vote for a roll call. Um, Public discussion on articles that are voted by Australian ballot is allowed by state law. So we do have Article 14, which is uh, going to be Australian ballot, but we will be able to um, talk about and debate that. We can't change it, can't amend it, um, but we just get to talk about it, and then we'll end discussion, and we'll vote on that tomorrow. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, any uh, folks that are not registered Rochester voters to make themselves um, aware, just uh, raising your hand. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, you can talk, right? um, in, uh, I want to remind you that, uh, that as, um, as guest is not registered voters, you can't uh, participate in, in speaking on an article or voting. Um, however, in the past, our community has been very welcoming to guests, and we have suspended that rule, that Robert's rule, and allowed guests to speak. So I would. Um, Tonight, I um, asked to, by unanimous consent, say that we would suspend that rule and allow our guests to speak if no one has an objection. Great. And that allows our guests, our senator and representative, to speak uh, tonight. <laughs> Otherwise, it would <laughs> So, um, Ruth Hardy is our um, state senator. And welcome, Ruth. She has a few words she wants to share. Hello, hello? Yeah. Now it's up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Dan, for letting me speak and for all of you. Um, my name is Ruth Hardy. I'm one of your two state senators, um, and you are technically part of the Addison District, although you're in Windsor County. Um, but I am here um, in part because I want you to know that I don't forget about Rochester, um, and I try to get up here as, as often as I can. And thank you so much for having me tonight to your town meeting. Um, I live in East Middlebury, um, and I'm also going to try to make it to a couple other town meetings tonight. So I will give you a brief update about what's happening in the legislature, and then I will uh, go off to Goshen and Ripton after this. <laughs> um, so um, I serve in the Senate, we serve on two committees. I serve on the Health and Welfare Committee, which um, has a jurisdiction over things that, that relate to health and welfare. For example, last year we passed the, the large um, child care bill, which is now Act 76. That was I was the lead sponsor of that bill and worked really hard to get um, improvements and expansion to our child care system here in Vermont. Um, and then I also chair the Government Operations Committee. So the things that um, Dan referred to as state law governing um, town meetings and all public meetings uh, fall under the jurisdiction of the Government Operations Committee. And so I wanted to give you a couple little updates about what that committee's been working on that might be relevant to you. Um, one is we're doing a bill, um, we just passed it out of committee last week, that, over, um, that does an update to the open meeting law. And you especially, uh, your select board, may have heard about this. 
Um, during the pandemic, um, public bodies, which are all uh, boards and commissions and committees that work in the public, including your select board, your library board, your school board, they are all subject to the open meeting laws, meaning that you all get to participate in those meetings and come to those meetings, and they can't meet behind closed doors, except for in very specific circumstances. During the pandemic, those bodies were able to meet via Zoom, or remotely, um, and we learned a lot about how meetings can happen remotely during the pandemic. Um, that allowance for re fully remote meetings ends on June 30th of this year. So we have updated the open meeting law to allow for some flexibility. Um, so any advisory committees can meet fully remotely if they want to, or in person, or in hybrid. And those are the, the subcommittees of boards or the smaller committees that don't have uh, taxing or legislative um, capabilities. Um, and then all the other bodies, like your select board, has to continue to meet um, in person, or if they meet remotely, there has to be an in-person location for people to come to for those meetings. Um, so that's one big bill that we um, updated to make sure that meetings are transparent and boards are accountable and that they're accessible to all of you. Um, and then we also have been working on a big bill about the government response to flooding. Um, you were very fortunate that you didn't get flooded this time around, but I know that Rochester has a, a very, very stark experience with flooding. Um, so we wanted to make sure that next time Vermont gets flooded, that we are able to respond appropriately. So this bill um, would update our emergency uh, response system, our emergency alert system. It updates statutes related to stormwater um, districts and utilities. And it updates um, provisions related to first responders, specifically for public works departments. I don't know if anybody in here is part of the Rochester Public Works Department, but those people are incredibly important during an emergency. Um, and it also provides a grant program for towns to apply to to update their infrastructure to avoid flooding in the future. So those are two things that the um, Government Operations Committee has been working on. The legislature as a whole has been working very closely on housing issues. Probably heard a lot about Act 250. I'm not an expert on Act 250, but I'm happy to get you answers if you need them. Um, and we also have been working uh, closely on school funding issues. And I'm sure that you've heard a lot about the potential tax increase. Um, we did pass a bill two weeks ago, um, H 850, that did um, limit some of the tax increases and so hopefully your district won't be as seeing as high a tax increase as potential but i encourage you to talk to your school board members and read about your school um, budget proposal before you vote on it tomorrow um, i don't have all the details on every single school district but it is definitely something that we're still working on in the legislature to hopefully find additional fixes so that the tax increases won't be as high as you've probably heard um, so that's my quick update, and I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I'm happy to stay around for a couple minutes to answer questions if you have them. Um, one last thing, because I'm the chair of the Government Operations Committee, we deal with voting and civic engagement, and I have a comic book here, and I brought a few others, that were put out by the Center for Cartoon Studies and the Secretary of State's office. They're great for fourth through eighth grade kind of level uh, for, for people, and grown-ups too, frankly, I read the whole thing, um, who are interested in civic engagement and democracy in Vermont. It's called Freedom and Unity. I'll leave some out on the table if you have kids, and if you're a teacher or somebody who wants more, please reach out and I can get, get you a whole bunch for your class. Thank you so much for having me, everybody. We also have uh, Kirk Waite, a representative. Uh, uh, hi. Am I on? Can you hear me back there? Uh, so, hi, I'm your representative, Kirk White. I uh, live in Bethel, and I represent Rochester, Hancock, Stockport, and Rochester. And uh, one of the advantages of going second is that uh, Ruth covered a number of things uh, that were on my uh, list today, including uh, the uh, H850 and, and some of the other bills around uh, school funding and those kind of things. But I, I still have things to say. So um, 
your uh, the house this year uh, set a number of priorities, and they've been working on the, uh, quite a few bills uh, <coughs> pertaining to creating affordable housing uh, and also to uh, find ways to combat the homelessness that is, is a real problem. <coughs> and uh, and that and, and some of that includes uh, altering Act 250 um, and, and and making other kinds of funding for construction projects uh, for people. <coughs> Like, um, I came, came here a few weeks ago and we talked about uh, VHIP, uh, the uh, Vermont Housing Improvement Program, and, and those kinds of programs. So there's, there, there's a lot of that that happened, and it's still happening, and there's, there's going to be, uh, really, it's a, a big focus. Uh, the, uh, some of the other uh, committees uh, have focused on uh, public safety, improving our justice and correction systems. Uh, there's been some, a uh, lot of support for our working lands and Farmers, loggers, and those folks, um, and um, and also again, you know, a lot of help for those affected uh, communities affected by flooding. <coughs> so, and of course, your state legislature is required to do all that by with a balanced budget. So, we unlike the feds, we can't run a deficit. So, we have to pick and choose what we can fund and what we can. Uh, I, as uh, unlike the Senate, the House, uh, each House representative sits only on one committee, and my committee is uh, economic, <coughs> commerce and economic development. And commerce is all the stuff that regulates business. So that's uh, that's insurance, uh, the exciting world of insurance, and uh, um, as well as uh, consumer protection and economic development, helping businesses and all that stuff. And so that's my committee. Uh, Last year, my committee spent a lot of time uh, on that workforce development piece, and so we, we put through a lot of programs for upskilling workers, people who wanted to get higher credentials and get better jobs. Uh, we uh, set up a bunch of grants and forgivable loans for nurses and teachers and a number of other professions that would forgive those loans if they stayed in Vermont after they graduated. Uh, so um, those kind of, the idea was they had to stay for a certain number of years, and hopefully by then they would settle down and want to stay. Um, we also um, had uh, done a lot of other kinds of coordinating of these things. And one thing we found was that a lot of state departments have their own little <coughs> economic development pieces. There's a piece to help the teachers in the, in the, in the education, uh, you know, agency of education. There's a little one to help the nurses in the health department. And there's all these little economic development and training program things in all, this, all these different departments, and they don't actually communicate with each other, which is probably surprising to you that the state ever has trouble communicating with one another. Uh, and so uh, one of the things my committee has been working on is actually redoing that whole structure. Uh, there was a, a study committee that, that worked over the summer, and we're actually restructuring the economic development commission in the state. It had 69 people on that commission, and, uh, and they, you know, it's hard to get anything done when you have too many people on the board, so we're cutting the board in half, that should also save some money, uh, and uh, a number of other pieces to that. So, it's one of the things my committee's been doing. <laughs> my committee also worked on baby bonds to help with generational poverty. Uh, we updated our captive insurance rules. If you don't know what captive insurance is, you're missing out, I tell you. Uh, it, it's it's actually more exciting than it sounds like, and uh, so if you if, if you're ever just curious, come on, ask me to tell you about captive insurance. Vermont uh, is the number one domicile of captive insurance in the world, uh, and so whatever that is, uh, we also worked on insurance coverage for particular breeds of dogs, uh, creating a new Vermont Film Commission uh, to encourage more film industry in Vermont. Uh, we also work on bills around consumer protections, around predatory vehicle towing and storage, and, and a whole bunch of other things. The biggest bill that my committee's worked on is data privacy, <coughs> uh, consumer, consumer protection. Every day, we disclose a ton of information about ourselves, whether we know it or not. Uh, it's more than just our likes on our social media, but it's also the search engine, cell phones, health trackers. If you've got a little health tracker, somebody knows what your blood, blood pressure is, what rate is, and they're gathering that data. They're also gathering uh, uh, off of their, they're scraping your Facebook page and 
and recording your face image, recording the veins on your hand, uh, the, the gait at which you walk. Uh, they're paying attention to the places you go, what your friends are interested in. They know what doctor's office you go to if you have a cell phone in your pocket when you go. They're collecting all that data, and they sell it. And they're virtually almost no control over, over that piece right now. <coughs> Federal government would be the right place for that to happen, but uh, they actually have it. So there are 14 states that passed legislation to protect consumer privacy, and, and particularly, especially around children's privacy. And so uh, my committee has been working with uh, all the other states around the country, working with uh, you know the Fed bill that was uh, proposed and died, uh, and just kind of all the advocates and industry, industry people, and we're really trying to, to create sort of, uh, Can I ask you am I not even working? Just going in and out. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, so I'm almost done anyway. So if, if you missed most of it, good for you. Um, and, and, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, so uh, basically, we've been creating this, this huge uh, day privacy bill to protect your privacy, uh, to regulate what they can gather, who they can share it with, allowing you the opportunity to either opt in, that I want them to gather my data about this, uh, or to opt out and say, no, nobody can gather my data whatsoever. With exceptions, right? Your court case, your court records are never going to go away. Uh, you know, your, your health your health records, you don't want your hospital to not be able to keep them, those kind of things. So, we're, but we're really working on that, and we believe we're going to get a, a really good bill out of this in the next couple of weeks uh, that we'll send over to the Senate. And if we pass it, advocates will tell us that we will be uh, either number one or number two in uh, protection of data privacy in the country. So, uh, so we're, we're excited about doing that. Uh, otherwise, um, I, I want to thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to speak a little bit. Thank you for the letting me be your representative. It's an honor to do so. Uh, one of the things that when I originally ran and, and what I tried to tell everyone is a large part of what I want to do uh, is educate people how what's going on and how things work so that you can advocate for yourself. And in that regard, I want to mention two free Bethel University classes that are coming up. First, uh, this coming Wednesday, March 6th at 6.30 at the Bethel Town Hall, will be a presentation called Why Vermont Needs More People and More People Need Vermont. And it's by Kevin Chu, who's the Executive Director of the Vermont Futures Project. And he's got, it's, a, it's a really in-depth, interesting look into the housing problem and how the housing problem affects you know, how many workers we can have and whether or not we can afford to, you know, we try to hire people to move in, but they can't find a house, so they don't move in. So it's a whole uh, interesting look into that. The second is a class that I'm actually teaching, uh, and it's called An Insider's Look at the Vermont Government. Uh, and, it's, and it's looking at, again, kind of the backdoor things that a lot of people don't know, uh, talking about uh, things that seem to work and things that don't, and how you can use all that to, to advocate for yourself, to, to, to get the best response from the government as you can. And that's going to be at my home on Christian, in my office, which is next door to my home, on Christian Hill in Bethel, and it's March 18th at 6.30. If you go to BethelUniversityBT.org, you can see all the classes and sign up. Uh, so, uh, otherwise, uh, I, will, I am going to stay till the end of your, your town meeting, so if, uh, if afterwards you have questions or, or opinions or anything you want to share with me, I will, I will be here. And uh, again, thank you for, for letting me speak. Without further ado, we'll jump into the, uh, the warning and the few articles we have before us tonight. Uh, town of Rochester, Vermont, annual town meeting to be held Monday night, March 4th, 2024, 7 p.m. <coughs> Legal voters of the town of Rochester. County of Windsor, State of Vermont, and are hereby notified and warned to meet in the Rochester School Auditorium in said town Monday, March 24, 2024, at 7 p.m. to transact the following business. There are 15, 16 articles. Uh, if there are no objections, I won't read them all right, right through fully right now. 
Um, I'll read each one as we uh, put it on the table to discuss, and then I'll read each one before we vote on it. So you'll hear it um, a couple of times. Uh, moving on to Article 1, to elect a moderator for the ensuing year. Any nominations? Martha? I'd like to nominate Dan McKinley to succeed himself. <laughs> Second. 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 Other nominations? I'm going to wait a half an hour. <laughs> After we know the nominations, we'll close nominations, and then I'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Dan McKinley for moderator. Article 2, to elect town officers required by law. Number 1, to elect a select board member for a three-year term. This was a seat, uh, this, was, this was Pat Harvey's seat. Any nominations? Yes, Cindy. I nominate Pat Harvey. Pat Harvey's been nominated. Second. Seconded. Any other nominations? Done. We'll close nominations and I'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Pat Harvey for a three year term. Select board. <laughs> Thank you, Pat, for your service already. Been on the select board. Number three, to elect a collector of delinquent taxes for a one year term. Oh, number two, thanks. Uh, to elect a lister for a three year term. This was Jessica. Arsenal's uh, seat. Any nominations? Good, Frank. Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing, so like wave pretty high. Go ahead. Go ahead. I nominate Jessica Arsenal. Jessica Arsenal's been nominated. I second that. Seconded. You allowed to do that? Yeah. Okay. It's <laughs> her mom. Yeah. Any other nominations? We know the nominations. We'll close nominations. Ask the clerk cast one ballot. I have to elect uh, Jessica Arsenal for a, as a listener for a three-year term. <laughs> now, number three, to elect a collector of delinquent taxes, a one-year term, um, respected clients are in. Um, any nominations? Yes. I nominate Becky Klein. Becky Klein is nominated. And seconded. Any other nominations? No, no, no other nominations. Then I'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Becky Klein for health care of delinquent taxes for a one year term. <laughs> Number four, to elect a library trustee for a five year term. This was Kelly Kelly's uh, seat on that library. Uh, Frank? Nominate Kelly Kelly. Kelly, Kelly's the nominee. Thank you. I need to respectfully decline the nomination, but thank you. Um, and I would like to nominate Lauren Scoggin. Lauren Scoggin? Mm -hmm. Lauren Scoggin's the nominee. Second. Seconded. Any other nominations? No other nomination? No. Can I just ask Kelly how you spell her last name? I'm sorry, I want to get it right. C-O-G-I-N. Oh, I was great. Thank you. No other nominations. We'll close nominations and we'll ask the clerk to cast one uh, ballot for Lauren Scoggin for library trustee. Or excuse me. Yes, library trustee for a five-year term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To elect a trustee of public funds, a three-year term, Barbara Harper and Nancy. Nancy? I'd like to nominate Barbara Hart to succeed herself. Barbara Second. Hart's been nominated and seconded. Any other nominations? Frank, did you have? No, no. no. Okay. Seconded, yep. No other nominations? We'll close nominations. We'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Margaret Hart for trust, uh, trustee of public funds for a three year term. Thank you. 
six to elect a cemetery commissioner for a three-year term. And also Nancy Woolley. Nominations, Tom? Okay. I'd like to nominate Nancy Woolley. Nancy Woolley's been nominated. Second. And seconded. Any other nominations? <coughs> no other nominations, we'll close nominations, and I'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Nancy Woolley for secretary commissioner for a five-year term. Thank you. Thank you. Article 3. Shall the voters authorize payment of real and personal property taxes in four installments with due dates being Thursday, August 15, 2024, Friday, November 15, 2024, Monday, February 17, 2025, and Thursday, May 15, 2025, by physical delivery to tax collector before 4 p.m. on those dates with postmarks not accepted as proof of delivery. I'll we'll move this article and second it. Move the article. Move the article. Second. Second. Any discussion on this article? Okay. Close discussion. You go to a vote. Shall voters authorize payment of real and personal property taxes in four installments in August, November, February, and, and May? To buy physical delivery to tax collector before 4 p.m. on those dates with postmark not accepted as proof of delivery. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Aye. Is that it? Article passes. <coughs> Article 4. Shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,386,286 of which 113384 $13,384 shall be raised by taxes. I'm going to move this and second it, and we'll have a discussion. Barb, moved and seconded. Uh, discussion on this article. No discussion. Close discussion and move to a uh, vote on Article 4. Shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,386,286, of which $1,013,384 shall be raised by taxes? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 4 passes. Article 5. Shall the voters appropriate $50,789.48 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. So moved. moved. Let me get a second. 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 All right. Um, discussion on this article. <coughs> no discussion. We will move to a vote on Article 5. Shall the voters appropriate $50,789.48 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 5 passes. Article 6. Shall the voters appropriate to transfer any remaining FY24 Fire Department budgeted funds to Fire Department Equipment Reserve Fund? Move that second, please. And he moves it, and a second comes from Barb. Thank you. Um, any discussion? No discussion. Move to a vote. Article 6. Shall the voters approve to transfer any remaining FY24 Fire Department budget funds to the Fire Department Equipment Reserve Fund? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Uh, is that it? Article 6. Passes. Article 7, shall voters approve to transfer any remaining FY24 Recreation Department budgeted funds to the Recreation Reserve Fund? I move it, I second it. Any discussion? No discussion on the article, so we'll move to a vote. So article 7, shall voters approve to transfer any remaining FY24 Recreation Department budgeted funds to the Recreation Reserve Fund? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye is that Article 7 passes. Article 8. Shall the town give the select board general authority to enter into tax stabilization contracts with owners, leases, 
bailies or operators of commercial or industrial property pursuant to Vermont state law. Moved. Moved the question. Seconded by someone. Second. Seconded back there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion on this? Frank and then move back. Um, thank you. Can you use the microphone, please? Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, um, I, I, I did actually uh, punch up. Uh, Can't hear you. Uh, I, I did actually punch up Vermont statutes online, and and looked at um, um, BSA two seven four one, and I'm and I'm wondering, um, what, um, I mean. Obviously, B1 in, in, is placing emphasis on the select board uh, being given general authority. But what? Um, Frank, the, 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 Frank, I'm so sorry. Can I turn your mic off? Oh. Just so you can be heard. <laughs> there you go. You're on. Uh, um, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering um, uh, what would be the difference uh, if this article of a word of limited authority, which is the other choice, uh, under that category B. Is, 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 gen, is, is the wording of that the way we generally uh, conduct business uh, in the select board? Does the select board respond to that? I believe that is. We were, um, um, had that wording dictated by the legal counsel to, uh, to make sure that, that what we put in the warnings would be would be proper. <coughs> yeah. But I think that it just in giving the general authority to the select board that just gives us the um, the opportunity to present any issue like this to the voters. So it's not something I think that the select board would be deciding so much as just giving us the opportunity to present it to the voters. But, but is that the is that the authority you you have usually general authority? No, with it, in this case, this would requires the the population to you know to vote to get that. So in other words, the way you usually operate is limited authority. Only in this, in this, for this topic. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you're expecting a lot of applications for stabilization coming forward. I don't know, but this is one step towards hopefully some ability to to stimulate some economic development in the valley or, or support it. If, and, and to facilitate the process. Right. Okay. Thank you. Another question in the back, uh, the back rows, back there on the. I got a big voice. Uh, <laughs> I didn't make the uh, the uh, town pre meeting, but so maybe I'll just did it as well. This might be too bad. Maybe yeah. I'll, maybe I'll just did it as well, but. Um, can we get a quick description, perhaps from the select board or from somebody, to say why, uh, what the stabilization of this, what the stabilization would actually mean in practice? Just briefly to give us an overview. One example of this in, in a slightly different form, but that when AI moved to the former um, Oatmeal Studios building, part of that um, transfer with the help of the Vermont Economic Development Association was that in the um, moving to that property and developing it for their purposes, part of the arrangement was that it was a five-year stabilization, so their increase on the property taxes was held stable for five years to get them a foothold so they could kind of, you know, get back on their feet after Hurricane or Tropical Storm Irene. And generate more jobs. I don't know if Kirk White, in your in your work towards um, support of economic um, development, do you have any input on what this what this would do for for that? Uh, <coughs> I, I don't have any specifics on no. that given the situation, but uh, I'm happy to. If afterwards, you know, do some research for you. That would be useful. Further discussion.
discussion on it, Kathy? I'm just curious, because this article hasn't appeared before. Kathy, right? can you uh, grab the mic? Oh. Yeah. Hi, Kathy Jacobson. Uh, curious, has this article ever been voted on before any language like this, or is this new? And what circumstances brought this article to come into this year's vote? Uh, this is new. I don't think that it was in before. Like I said, the Oatmeal Studios was a slightly different different form. But just in looking forward in efforts to, you know, be supportive and encouraging of, of I don't know if this could have any effect with what could happen in the school or not, but it's um it's another tool in the toolbox of trying to help stimulate activity in time. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, we're gonna see no more discussion on this, so oh. yeah, if I could uh, go ahead Rob. To give the select board general authority to enter into contracts, there's nothing in there that says um, they'll do the pre-work and then they'll come to the voters to say, yes, we're going to get a tax break to a business for a certain, you know, because it makes sense economically. So it just seems vague to me a little bit. I'm not against it. I really want this to happen. But it's just the language just seems like it's getting general authority to enter into a contract, but should be, shouldn't it be general authority to enter into a conversation and then bring it to the voters if it's a contract, if, it's, if it has a significant impact on the tax stabilization? Just asking it. I'm not against it. I'm just curious and it just seems really new. You could uh, move that as an amendment to the, um, to the article if you, if you think that would make sense. Maybe others can discuss it. I don't know. Yeah. Right, Dean. Dean Cooley, is there a formula or a? Uh, you have the mic. Mike. What mic? Hi, Mike. <laughs> is there a formula for the stabilization process that you use? I mean, that you allot? I mean, you said five years for the oatmeal steel studio transfer. Do you have a formula that you use? Don't know if um, we don't have a, you know, this is all just, yeah, it would be tailored to every situation, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Further discussion? Tax stabilization in perpetuity is different from tax stabilization for a period of one year or five years. This article does not make any distinctions between those things. Contracts. Right. <clears throat> right. And then did you have a piece in there about 
uh, voters or contracts of which will come before the voters. General authority to enter into discussion pursuant to tax stabilization contracts? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, general authority to enter into discussion about uh, discussion pursuant to tax stabilization contracts. Sorry. So in two uh, tax stabilization contracts, uh, which would come before the voters, there's debt contracts with owners, leases, bailies, or operators, commercial industrial partners, pursuant to, uh, which would come before the voters. Select for general authority to enter into uh, discussions with uh, discussions pursuant to contracts, uh, tax stabilization contracts uh, with owners, leases, operators, commercial industrial property pursuant to um, state statute, which would then come before the voters. Okay, discussion on this amendment. Back there, I can't see you. Go ahead. I just have a. Can you hear me? Yeah. I just have a question. Is the intent for new um, property owners, businesses, or is this for existing properties? I, I just. Yeah. It's, for, it's for economic growth. It's for existing businesses that want to grow. It's for new business that want to move here. Um, anything that would stimulate the business economy in our town. In our town. Thank you. <coughs> yes, uh, look in the back there along the row. I can't see. But it's sorry. Uh, I'm wondering. Uh, 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 I would have to uh, wait. You have to wait till the town meeting. Before anything could happen, with would that take too long? Or would uh, that be a special election, a uh, special referendum? Yeah, so the question is how would it come before the voters? I would suppose you could, you could um, call it a special. Special meeting to do that instead of you know not have to wait you know till the general town meeting but still you know um, putting the word out and and making it a public public vote. Yes, uh, yeah. Um, speakers, if you would, uh, if you're able, please stand and, and say your name so we can get it in the votes. Um, Mary first. Uh, uh, go ahead, Mary. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Just get the mic, Sarah. Mine's really short. Um, so if we, nobody can get so it. Mary, so can you say it? Yep. Yeah, my name is Mary Christine. Uh, so if we want to change the language to the amendment so that it, instead of saying it has to be brought before the voters at town meeting, it just says it has to be brought before the voters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then I think that would give us enough flexibility. Yeah. To do it here or at a special election. Yeah. Okay. Just give it to the young lady. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, so keep a general. Just brought before the voters. voters period. The, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So there's no change to that. To, to the amendment. Harry. So I. I can't. Oh, hi, Harry Burkhardt. Um, so I haven't seen, I haven't read the statute, but is it the statutory intent from you guys speaking with the um, lawyer for the town to have us vote on this? I mean, it says pursuant to the statute. So if the statute is talking about the select board having this power, 
to enter into the tax stabilization contracts, you know, that would be the statutory language, not the select board entering into conversations. So I'm just wondering if we're kind of thwarting the statutory language by amending it. Like, June, when you said that the intention was to have a vote, do you mean this vote giving you the power to do it, or do you mean that we all vote on, you know, the next business that moves down the street, like Oakdale Studios and AI? I, I, I believe the intent is to give us the authority to bring it to the public for a vote if the situation comes up. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Question for clarification for me, do you believe, do is that what you say the amendment is, or that's what the original statute is? That, I, I believe that's what our original intent was. Yes. And now I think that the amendment makes that clearer. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, Frank, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, people are looking for statutory language. Frank, can you grab the microphone? Yeah, yeah. Okay. second. People are looking for statutory language. Um, but, I mean, Providing general authority is um, B1. Uh, in, the, in the statute, um, again, this is 2741, B2, the language, and I actually, I, I asked, um, I made copies of this and asked Julie to um, give it to select board members and to uh, Dan, and I made a copy for herself too. But the language of B2 is provide limited authority to its legislative branch to negotiate contracts, which shall be effective upon ratification by a majority of those present and voting at an annual or special meeting worn for that purpose. Oh, it's already I, don't, I don't know if that would, that's the statutory language for B2 rather than B1. And I don't know if that answers people's um, desire for them. So what you're saying that would make an easy amendment would just be to change that one from a two. And yeah, that's that, already, well, the wording is already there. From, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be in the way of economic development, but I think from what I'm hearing, the, I, I think what would answer people's I think what would answer people's uh, concerns is the wording in the statute already under B2. And I think if you substituted B2 um, in, in this article, it would. Um, and provide an answer for that. Again, the, you should have the wording in front of you, each, each select board member, and Dan too, right? And I gave them to Joe Smith. Yeah, I, I don't have to think so. Uh, let, let's. Well, Joe Smith. Uh, I'm not going to interpret that. No, that's not going Uh, so where we are in process here, we have an amendment um, on the table that we need to either we could amend that amendment, and that's as far as we can go with amendments, or we go back to the original article, um, or we could, if folks uh, would like to um, vote on the amendment that we have, um, up or down, the one that we've, we've crafted, um, if it goes down, then we could go back to the original article and someone could uh, amend it to call for for B1, and I could read okay. the language right okay. out Can I just make one? So I would, I would recommend that um, instead of the amendment that we just created, as Frank pointed out, if we switch it from B1 to B2, that basically has the specific wording that 
are crafted amendment was headed towards, and then we know that um, whatever we're adopting is, is properly legally worded for the right um, statute. Okay. As the person who brought up the amendment, I would like to withdraw the amendment and he said substitute a two for a one in this parenthesis and then recover. Okay, well, that's basically what, what Jim was saying right there. Yeah, I second so, yeah. so we're, we've amended the amendment. Well, we can't remove it unless we vote it down, but we're, we're going to amend the amendment and scratch that language that we talked about before and just um, exchange. A one for a two, so yeah. statute would be 2741. <coughs> okay. um, someone want to second that? And then we'll have a discussion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but any discussion? So, what we have on the table right now, I'm going to read it. Uh, and then maybe we'll even read the, uh, read the statute so you know what you're getting into. Uh, Shall the town give the select board general authority to enter into tax stabilization contracts with owners, leases, valleys, or operators? commercial and industrial property pursuant to 24 BSA 2741B2. And B2 uh, says provide, as Frank had to it, but I'll read it uh, so you know what you're getting into, provide limited authority to its legislative branch to negotiate contracts which shall be effective upon ratification by a majority of those present and voting at an annual or special meeting warned for that purpose. So that's the amendment to right. um, the article. Any discussion? Can I call the question? Sure. I'd like to call the question. Okay. Um, call the question. All in favor of ending debate, say aye. 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 I think that's two thirds. So we. Um, End of debate. We're going to vote on this um, amendment. Uh, Shout out to town. Give the select board general authority to enter into stack tax stabilization contracts with owners, VC, bailies, or operators of commercial or industrial property pursuant to 24 BSA 2741B2. All in favor of that amendment say aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right, somebody help me out with Robert's rules here. Now that we have, we have an amended article. Call the Pardon? Call the article. Oh, so we got to go back to the article. We have a new article. We have to, Gary? Well, I just noticed something. No <laughs> problem. Well, I, I called up the, the actual statute on my phone, and I think that we need to change one word of our amendment, because um, we're saying provide general authority. Part two provides limited authority. Yeah. So I think that's the difference yeah. for my reading. I think the amendment does that. What we can read is going to two instead of one. Okay. Yeah. I thought. A, A1 is provides. Right. Uh, but doesn't it say. Um, I thought I heard you still say the first, the, the sixth, seventh word general. Yes. I did say that. I just okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's my only concern right there. And if if it says limited, then it's all. It says limited in the statute. Yeah. It doesn't say limited in our article. Correct. And you can decide whether you can live with that or but the statute actually being you know, what's providing the direction. Okay, we'll move to a vote on the uh, new article that's been amended. Uh, I'm glad shall the town give the select board general authority to enter into tax stabilization contracts with owners, VCs, bailies, or operators of commercial industrial property pursuant to 24 BSA 2741B2. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Aye, it's had it. Nice to come. discussion. Nice to come. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> Article 9. <clears throat> Shall the voters vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by these community agencies? Central Vermont Council on Aging, $3,000. Fire Martin Center, $2,066. Green Up Vermont, $100. Orange County Parent Child Center, $250. Quintown Senior Center, $9,849. Safe Link, Safe Link Inc., $250. Tri Valley Transport, formerly Stagecoach, $1,300. Vermont Rural Fire Hydrant, 100. 
Uh, Vermont Nurse Visiting Nurse Association, 4,800. White River Partnership, 875. Atria, formerly known as Woman Safe, 250 for a total of $22,840. And uh, we move that and second it. So moved. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I can't see who it is, so sorry. If you can stand and give your name, that'd be great. Hello. Hi, thank you, Larry. Pleasure. Oh, hi. Uh, hi. Thank you. Um, what is Safe Line Inc.? Thank you. Any representative or someone knowledgeable about Safe Line Inc.? That's right in here. Hi. 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 You can sit, uh, stand if you can and give your name. Hello. <laughs> hi, Pat. Representative for Safe Line. Safe Line is a organization in Chelsea that provides services for women and children of domestic and sexual abuse. They have a hotline. If you would like that number, um, please see me at some point. Thanks. Further discussion? Yes, sir. Microphone right away. Thank you. Mary Bertini, I just want to say it's on page 86 of the town report. Is there, uh, the town, in the town report is what State Line did um, last year. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote on Article 9. Shall the voters vote to appropriate following some as requested by these community agencies? If there are no objections, I won't read through them again, but give you the total of 22,840. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. All right, have it. Article 9 passes. Article 10 Shall the voters appropriate $21,420 to continue funding the North Star Rubbish Removal LLC recycling program from July 1, 2024 through <coughs> June 30, 2025? Remember, that is that would be, uh, a corrected number that I read in the uh, report. Um, move and a second? I don't know. Second. Yes. second. All right, thank you. Discussion? Could I just mention that the, they're the people who do our recycling at the, um, at the town office every Saturday. They're the people who do recycling and everything at the town office every Saturday. And I've been just really impressed with this particular um, company or group of people working for the company um, and just how helpful and kind they are and um, willing to answer all kinds of questions. And if someone has trouble moving around sometimes, they are very kind to me. Um, I'm just impressed with them, and I'm glad that we have them, and we're lucky to have them on Saturday. Yep. Larry? Um, Here comes the mic. Larry Strauss. Uh, although this was just a typo, uh, just for clarity, I, I would like to offer an amendment to this article to uh, read $21,420 uh, because it has been posted and worn. Um, and while we have announced here that it's uh, just a typo, I think it'd be more proper to vote on an amendment to the dollar amount. I'll second that. We have an amendment um, on the table, and it would uh, read just like the um, review article, but I'll read it again as an amendment and to bring it up for discussion. To have the voters appropriate $21,420 to continue funding the North Star Rubbish Removal LLC recycling program from July 1, 2024 through June 30, 2025. Um, discussion on that amendment? We'll move to a vote on that. I'm not going to read it uh, again. Um, if there are no objections, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Okay. So, Robert's rule question. Larry, you're going to do I need to 
So I need to read it again, because it's been amended. We have a new article. Yeah, okay. All right. I have to save you there. <laughs> article 10, a child loan to appropriate $21,420 to continue funding the North Star Rubbish Removal LLC Recycling Program from July 1, 2024 through June 30, 2025. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Article 10 passes. Article 11, the child lawyers approved to transfer 8,000 from the reappraisal reserve fund to the general fund uh, on July 1, 2024, for the purpose of reducing taxes for the incoming fiscal year. Moved by Catherine. Seconded. Carried. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Last year we thought perhaps we were looking at a reappraisal coming in the near future, and so we added eight thousand dollars into that fund, which we voted at town meeting, um, to be sure that we had <clears throat> the sufficient funds to cover the reappraisal process. Since then, we have gotten the word from the state that we are due for a reappraisal. Um, we went immediately out to get quotes for that reappraisal process, and the quotes came in a little less less than we anticipated. So we have contracted for a townwide reappraisal to start in 2025 and be completed by the end of June 2027? 26. 26. So it's coming. It's, it's under contract and paid for. So what we discovered is the extra money we put in thinking we needed that, we, we found we don't need it. So we're going to put it back in the general fund. Thank you. Further discussion? We'll end discussion then and move to uh, a vote. Article 11, shall the voters approve to transfer 8,000 from the reappraisal reserve fund to the general fund on July 1, 2024, for the purpose of reducing taxes for the coming fiscal year. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Aye, say aye. Article 11 passes. Article 12, shall the voters approve to transfer $10,000 from the cemetery reserve account to the general fund to offset cemetery budget expenses. Discussion? Um, how does moving it out of the cemetery account offset the budget expenses? So, can you ask the question again? Sorry. Uh, I, I was just saying, if you're transferring $10,000 out of the account uh, to offset cemetery budgeted expenses, do you mean there's, there's more than they need in there? Is that what you're saying? It, it, it's the way that that works is um, the, the cemetery um, budgeted expenses lined up in, in the budget for this year. Um, there's a the reserve fund that has been built up for the cemetery maintenance and such that um, it was um, generously offered by the, the cemetery commission that they could they could afford to kick back some of that money that had been put in the reserve fund over the years to help to keep the budget in a, in a moderate increase. Thank you. So, yeah. Any further discussion? Yeah, we'll close the discussion and move to a vote on Article 12. Uh, the voters uh, approved to transfer 10000 from the cemetery reserve account to the general fund to offset cemetery budget expenses. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Ayes uh, have it. Article 12 passes. Article 13, shall the voters approve to transfer 8000 from the revolving loan fund to the general fund? Moved. I carry and seconded. Thank you. 
Discussion? Yeah, Frank. What is, the, what is the purpose of the revolving loan fund? <laughs> Think, things like this, it, it appears. It, um, as far as we could determine, this was um, um, started in the maybe 50s, 60s. As a, I'm not sure where the money came from, but it's been used throughout the years to help um, help people deal with failed septic systems. It was used once to help the town buy a truck, and that's just, um, it was another um, chunk of money that we um, thought we could use to keep the budget in, in, in control. Does the fund still exist? Yes, yeah, we're not, not closing it, we're just mm, using it. How is that? How how is that different from general funding? It's just it, it had its own it's it's a, an own separate fund you know, category here. Yeah. But for it's kind of an ad need account. You could say that yeah it's definitely se separated from the general fund. It's a reserve, it's, it's a reserve account basically. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether it would be wise to leave it leave it be. Uh, Catherine and David. Go ahead, David. Yeah. We always get the money back, right? So why can't we just leave it there? Catherine? So let me just, you, you said that, that people need help with septic. So does that mean that a property owner who has to replace a septic can actually go to the town and ask for a loan? This fund? It, it has been used in that way in the past, yes. Because yeah. there are people who are in that situation who may not even know that this is an option. And so I by us know. using it, they um, get some publicity. Terry? Do you have a ballpark of how Terry Burkhardt starts? Do you have a ballpark of how much is in there? 8,000. 8, <laughs> <laughs> but you're not closing it, so it's like 8,001? Yeah, it's like 808. <laughs> 8,230. Any other discussion? Now the discussion will move to a vote on Article 13. John voters approved to transfer $8,000 from the revolving loan fund to the general fund. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. 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 Here's as the ayes have it on that one from the voice vote. Ayes have it. Article 13 passes. Article 14. Um, this one will be voted on by Australian ballot um, tomorrow at mm -hmm. the town office. Uh, we'll, be, <clears throat> we'll read it and we can have a discussion. Article 14, shall general obligation notes or bonds of the town of Rochester in an amount not to exceed $359,243.00 payable from the town's general fund derived from the taxation of real property for a period not to exceed 30 years is subject to reduction by available grants and aid or other funding sources. Be issued to finance the cost of removing and replacing the existing West Hill Bridge, Town Highway 37 Bridge, with a bridge on a modified alignment and associated road and channel work together in the project. Moved by. John moved it and seconded it. Oh, sorry. No, we can move it for discussion. We're not going to go on. Okay. Uh, discussion. Martha. And this, is, this has actually already been done. Yeah. This work yeah. has already no. been done. I'm clear, am I clear on the fact that this work has already been done and what you're asking for in this, if it gets approved, 
is the money to pay for it. Huh? Does that mean that grant money paid up to a certain point and this was like the balance left over? It just seems like a very unusual it is. for this town. It is, yeah. yeah. And, and so in it's fact, like the, the, what transpired um, since the beginning of this project and the, um, and the final prices, um, prices just went up, frankly. So. You really, you want to break this down? <laughs> <laughs> um, we basically put this project was started in 2019. And it went through the COVID era there. The government designed the bridge. They were going to pay for it as pretty much all of it. Um, the, the original uh, price for the estimate for doing the job was 660000 we had secured funds enough to uh, add 775000 We sent out the bids in February. We received uh, four bids. Um, the lowest one was $1.2 So we were subject to losing the funds of 775000 um, So we elected to build the bridge. Uh, because we would lose that funds if we didn't. So it left us with a balance of 359 or 243. So we did it that way because we couldn't, number one, keep the funds, and number two, uh, we didn't think the price was ever going to go down anyway. So we elected to do the job. So that leaves us a balance of what's in there is 359, 243. And if we don't pass this article, um, we will need to pay the bank back because we've already borrowed the money to do the job. We paid the, the uh, contractor, and he his final uh, price that we paid him was uh, one point one two two nine thirty nine and twenty cents. Uh, so that made the bond two fifty nine two point two. So. If we don't pass this article and bond this, we will need to pay that money back within a four-year period. So that would be a pretty substantial hit to your tax base in the next four years. So I hope that clears things up a little bit. The funds came from the Forest Service. The funds came, we got 600000 from the Forest Service and 175 from the state. They promised us more, but because of the floods of summer, they couldn't deliver on it. So that's how we have to go for that amount. Further discussion? Mm -hmm. Great. I am anticipating that. Um, There'll be other uh, funding from grants and aid. Or, um, We've got all the funding we could get for the project. I tried to get more, but there was just no way. The state had, had offered us some more money, but then we had the floods this summer, and we just couldn't yeah. didn't have any funds to put for it. So that was how we. That's about all we could do. Yeah, here, here. Referring back to the earlier article where we were discussing giving the select board authority to enter into contracts in a limited manner, how does your entering into that contract to build a bridge relate to that? Separate, separate Apples issues. and oranges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We already have the authority okay. to turn the roads. Yeah. Further. Here, Frank. 
Dianne White. So I see this as two choices. One, we vote it down, we pay it back in four years, or we vote for it and we pay it back over in 30 years. I don't see that we have a choice. Right. The interest rates are a lot different. <laughs> Can you elaborate? Can you elaborate on the, the interest rates um, being different? We really haven't looked into it deeply enough on that end of it, but figuring that the bond is a, a lot cheaper. Maybe Julie, you um, researched it more. That, it, um, they're saying around 5%. It's hard to tell right now, but the, once we've been approved, <laughs> Once we've been approved, then um, after bond council, then we can go for the bond. And at that time, rates, it will depend. Um, but they've been saying around 5%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no further discussion? We'll move to a well, uh, and discussion on this, and we'll move to Article 15. I would just like to say that <laughs> this is one of the times when it takes courage. Can you, uh, wait. This is one of the times when it takes simply courage to be uh, someone with authority vested by the public. Thank the select board for making this decision. All right, moving on to Article 15. Shall the town adopt the following declaration of inclusion? The town of Rochester condemns racism and welcomes all persons, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression age, disability, or socioeconomic status, and wants everyone to feel safe and welcome in our community. As a town, we formally condemn all discrimination in all of its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment to everyone in our community, and will strive to ensure all of our actions, policies, and operating procedures affect this commitment. The town of Rochester has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. Moved, Barb. Moved it. Thank you, Barb. Seconded. Seconded by Dan. Yes, the select board strongly suggested to place five words into the, in between an operating procedure and reflect the commitment so that it would read and operating procedures from this day forward to reflect this commitment. Um, if this was adopted, we don't want to have the exposure of having to go back and amend all of our policies to include this statement in them. So it would be from this day forward. Got it. Got it. I second that. Amendment <coughs> has been seconded. Let me um, uh, read the, uh, the uh, read the amendment then. Tell the town adopt the following declaration of inclusion. The town of Rochester condemns racism and welcomes all persons, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, age, disability, or socioeconomic status, and wants everyone uh, to feel safe and welcome in our community. As a town, we formally condemn all discrimination in all of its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community, and will strive to ensure all of our actions, policies, and operating procedures from this day forward reflect this commitment. The town of Rochester has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. Um, discussion? Mason? This is Mason Wade. Uh, I have a concern uh, about page 88 in reference to this article that we want to pass. Page 88 is a situation where 
Uh, we should replace the names of individuals with parcel numbers because basically this is still a situation where some folks have, are in difficulties after being wonderful taxpayers, and this should not be a public whipping post. And it's time to eliminate it in reference to this particular article. Is that, is that what I'm hearing in this article being read that we're supposed to be welcoming? And the fact that we are public, public, having this public, uh, the situation where people can be uh, uh, swindled by someone else if they see their name published like this, it, it's just, is that, is that what I'm hearing in this article that we would eliminate this? Is asking if uh, the clause on page 88 to with the tax property, is that something that would be covered by this, this article? If it went to pass <coughs> from the state forward? From the state forward? Mm -hmm. That's just I, I an example. Like we're, we're not voting right now to get rid of the delinquent tax. She's, Asking as an example, no, this is the discussion. Yeah, and this is uh, an example of one of the things that might be um, considered in, in this discussion. I guess is this um, is it discriminatory to to um, list the people that have done delinquent taxes? No, is that um, a good question? Yeah. Mary. Just that I, this is Mary Dean. Uh, so just that I understand what we're talking about now is uh, whether we want to uh, amend this article with the five words from the select board, right, from the state board. Right. Yes. And uh, so to my mind, that that's one question. And then if we were to pass that amendment, pass this at town meeting, a question, the specific question of this example of whether posting someone's name for being delinquent in taxes is an example of a policy that would discriminate against them for their socioeconomic status would be something to be brought up at a subsequent select board meeting because it would be a change in policy operating forward. Right. So that's how I'm understanding the, the question of what we're doing right now. Good synopsis. Yep. Yeah. We're on the amendment. Can I move the amendment to the first Yeah. 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 Uh, we can end debate on it and move to vote on it. That would be the next step if discussion is finished. <laughs> uh, Dave Cooley, I just wondered how declaration and inclusion. What is that? How does that affect the town, or how it work? How the declaration of inclusion? How does that affect the town and how you, how we do business, or how it affects the charter or whatever? Theoretically, um, not in any um, specific way, unless we do determine that um, the town has been discriminating against people, and Mason brings up this point. But I think that Mary had a good point that right now we're voting on the amendment to it, and then we can move on to, to the discussion of the, the policy itself. Yeah. So I move the vote to the amendment. All the yeah, John Adams called the question. Um, all in favor of ending discussion, moving to a vote, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. That ends the discussion, we'll move to a vote on the amendment. Um, if there are no objections, I won't read the entire piece. I'll start from um, uh, the sentence where the amendment is. is. Um, pardon? Right. We, we're no, we're voting on the amendment right now. And once we um, vote, we approve the, if we approve the amendment, then we'll go back and vote on the new article. So as a town, we formally condemn all discrimination in all its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment to everyone in our community, and will strive to ensure all of our actions, policies, and operating procedures from this day forward reflect this commitment. The town of Rochester has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. All in favor of that amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Okay. Ayes have it. We have a, an amended article. 
Um, any discussion on the amended article? So this comes back down to Dane's um, question. Um, so how does it affect um, the town? That was our question quite a bit. This has come across our desk for this year three, yes. at least a couple of years. Yes. This has been presented and we decided this is, and so a lot of towns just adopted it at the select board meeting. We decided that this was something that should come for the town as a whole, that we don't need to, you know, make these kind of decisions just on, on our own. And that's why we brought it to discussion. The, um, the response that we got um, from the people that put forth this um, policy, which has been adopted by the state itself, and, and not every town in Vermont, but quite a few, 130 towns in Vermont have adopted this, is, um, is, is generally that it's, um, it's a, a safeguard, a safeguard, but a, a way of, of Presenting, you know, what we hope is is a positive, supportive environment and place for people to live. So now, um, we um, we added that amendment um, to from this day forward, just so it wouldn't complicate the running of the town. And all of a sudden, we've adopted something that obligates us to start digging through the history books to try and expunge anything that was discriminatory. I don't think there is a lot. Now, Mason brings up the question, <coughs> is the listing of people that have delinquent taxes fall under that definition of discrimination? That's, that's, a, that's a question. I don't know if it does. That's, um, that's an interesting question. Further discussion? Catherine? the town evolves. My husband loves to do the history. And there was a time when we published the names of the people who lived in the poor farm that was supported by the town. And every penny that was spent on them. We don't do that anymore. We don't have a poor farm anymore. But we do have a charitable fund in Rochester. And we uh, keep every all the applicants confidential. So I think that, you know, philosophies, identifying who we are, it evolves. Mm -hmm. And this, is, to me, is just sort of making a statement to who we hope to be, who we would like to be, who we are. Yeah. Thank you. Lizzie Schaffer. Hi. Um, I will admit, I was a little bit skeptical of this. Um, I've heard on VPR how folks have been there. It's kind of an outside effort trying to push this for adoption in towns all across the state. But I've been thinking a lot about it. I think it's very low cost, very low risk. But it does say something about us. And I think that Mason brought up a really good point. This is something where if someone has a concern about something we're doing in town, and whether or not it is inclusive or you know, kind of put certain people out um, in a different way, in a way that you know is discriminatory or unfair, this gives grounds for someone to raise this and raise the question, at select board at town meeting. So I think it's um, low risk, low harm, and is an opportunity for us to give people um, a chance to raise their own concerns like this with an official grounds for, for laying it out. So I support it. So you could look at the list of delinquent taxes as an invitation to join the rest of us that pay the taxes. <laughs> 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 no, we're still in discussion on the amended article. Yes, Rob. Work. So I just want to say, I think Mason makes a good point. I'm not sure what utility that it is to the town to have people listed when many of them may have uh, financial problems, uh, economic status, whatever, the way that this statement suggests. So I would just put, I think Mason brings a good point up. And since what we're in a way, what we're talking about is what kind of place we are, the over overarching statement, kind of place we are. Uh, do we really need to list delinquent taxes? Is it to our advantage? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Mary? You can, you can tell me to stop talking. No, no, no. <laughs> I just think it's important to remember that we're not actually voting, we're talking right now about whether we should or shouldn't put people's names with their delinquent taxes. What I'm understanding about this principle of inclusion, whether we vote it up or down, is that it articulates a principle that the town commits to. And if you have experience, imagine that we vote, it, vote to accept it moving forward. If you have something that you believe, a town policy that you believe is discriminating against you under one of these categories, this is what Lizzie means when she says it becomes grounds for you to take it to the select board. You could then take it to the select board and say, here is a thing we have been doing. We have been publishing people's names. We have also now adopted this principle of inclusion, and I would like to make the argument, for example, that we shouldn't do that because it is um, exclusionary. And then we can have that specific conversation. But what this would do is just articulate the general principle, and then we can play out specific examples in the smaller form of a select board meeting. John, you want to hear? It's still running. It's on already. Okay. I would suggest, and I can see both sides of the argument on whether this list should be in here, if only because I'm on the list, but uh, for a small amount, very bottom. Uh, if I could see both sides of this argument, uh, however, I support the amendment as it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. I support the amendment as it is, and we maybe. Somebody should make them amend, uh, a motion, not an amendment to this, a new motion that in the future the town should not post the link from taxpayers. Either now, make that a motion now. That's a separate as a new yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, yeah, I would um, say that would not be germane to this article. No, no not, because not, I have not this attaching this, not attaching it to this article. Right. Yeah. And if it hasn't been worn, that's a big oh, okay. okay. It wasn't okay. worn. We okay. could, if you wanted to, in other business, someone could bring that up and okay. say, let's have a straw poll and sort of give the That's where I was going. I, I could see okay. this it should be discussed, but it shouldn't be tacked onto this article. Or, or yeah, we'd be um, welcome to bring it up during other business. Yes. This, this is an aspirational thing that I think was, you know, it should be understood as this is what we want to be. This is who we believe we are. And we should have it. Do I have one back here? I don't need a mic. Walt Wells. Take a mic back there. Wally Arsenal. Wally Arsenal. Wally Arsenal. Wally Arsenal. Wally Arsenal. Wally Arsenal. Call the question. Um, to end discussion, need a two thirds vote. All in favor, any uh, discussion? Say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Okay. And then the discussion, we're going to a vote on the article as amended. Article 15 is how the town adopt the following declaration of inclusion. The town of Rochester condemns racism and welcomes all persons, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, age, disability, or socioeconomic status, and wants everyone to feel safe and welcome in our community. As a town, we formally condemn all discrimination in all its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community, and will strive to ensure all of our actions, policies, and operating procedures from this day forward reflect this commitment. The town of Rochester has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Uh, is that it? Article 15 passes as amended. Article 16, to transact any other legal and proper business to brought, be brought before the meeting. I'll remind you that we can't do any binding business here, um, but you can uh, discuss things and make suggestions to the select board if you want to go that route. Um, Mason.
a four-page report from the U.S. Forest Service to our town with, for many of us, this is the biggest issue in our lives right now. And to read the report and not see the language of the climate crisis by the U.S. Forest Service and talk about what they are planning to do and what our Green Mountain Forest means not only to us, but to the planet. How do we manage that? And uh, they should be aware that we passed a climate emergency initiative and we have expectations to know what our biggest partner in this community is planning to do. Uh, now, we are aware that there are large fires going on in May in the northern country, and it seems to be migrating south. We haven't been talking fire, we've been talking floods. So, we need to have more response by the U.S. Forest Service, I feel, and that the town and the select board should be more diligent. I do appreciate the select board in their letter to us uh, in their reference to environmental concerns. I think it's okay to use language like a climate crisis. So uh, I just wanted to bring that forth as business to this annual meeting. Thank you. Any other business? Catherine, right down here. This is a question. Did anybody notice how dark it is in the parking lot? Yeah. Aren't there lights? And if who, if whose responsibility is it to get the lights for the high school parking lot relit? Pardon? The school board. It's the school's responsibility. Okay. Thank you. Can I to adjourn? Oh, I didn't see there was someone else. Deputy Chair. I don't know if it's accurate, but when I called in the fall about the lights, I was told it's the electric company that's got to do things to the lights. And before we break up, can we thank Mariah? Yes. Thank you. Thank you.